This is NPL week number two. We've got a full season ahead of us. We're at the OGN Super Arena in Los Angeles. Well, hello. Here we have Cloud9 and um, our, their team manager, Chrissy. She's a very, very awesome mother. Today is Mother's Day, so don't forget to uh, greet your mom's happy Mother's Day. Thank you. What I'm looking forward to is like actually winning. Um, last time we got second place, it was not that close, but it was like right there. And this time we're gonna try to win. Like it's a, it's only the second week, so like teams in the bottom, after like the two days of this weekend and week two, like they could be at the top of the leaderboard. So you have to take it like one game at a time, and just not worry about getting too ahead or too behind. Like you just try not to think of the points, and I think you'll play better. We're in third place right now, but the points are like pretty close, so anything can happen. At this point, the leaderboards can get mixed up really easily. You just have one good game, one high frag win, and you just jump up the leaderboards. It usually comes down to the last few games of the whole season, but you want to put yourself in a situation where it doesn't matter that much. Being in sixth place is bittersweet because we want to be in first place, but at least we're not in like 12th place or something right now. So We should be able to see him, no? We usually start off slow because I would say we don't play as much like leading up to the tournaments. We like to take it easy and not uh, like burn ourselves out because the season is so long that we want to kind of like relax and rest and then prepare, uh, which could be a bad thing. But I mean, we, we'll bring it back up either way. So I think we're feeling pretty confident. If we get off to a good start, we should close out the rest of the day well. That's what we're looking to do. I think Team Envy is a pretty aggressive team. They have like really good fraggers on the team so they can afford to take risky fights and win them. If, if you ask me one player that I'm a little scared to fight up close, it's definitely venerated. He's always had these insane shots on me over the past two years, so. Cloud9, they loot center of the map and they drive center of the circle really fast, so usually we don't uh, like meet them at all. But the teams that are near you usually have plans for like the Pecadoras or Ghost. C9 loves to go mid. They have the best drops in the entire game, in the entire region, but the circles are so out of con like normal, right? Like hard south shifts, military positions, points that Cloud9 is struggling to make those rotations. So I think teams like Envy are doing okay. C9 is sort of trying their best to survive because these circles have been strange. You can't really complain about us not winning on those circles. Zero. For four games now, we've been chasing circles, so. But our, our last game was uh, the best game we've had today. And we'll, we'll take it in and probably do well tomorrow. The first game was winnable. We got, I think, third place with some kills. I think we ended up dying the Tempo Storm, but it was definitely a winnable game. Game one, we had a pretty good uh, position for a circle. We made our way there pretty safely, uh, no trouble. Uh, the first mistake we did is we lost our cars, and the uh, circle went all the way south, so we had to drive down the hill with only two cars. By the time we get down the hill, we had lost another car, so only one car left, there's four of us. So fitting more peop four people in one car and driving south again, because the circle went south again, is a little risky, it's easy to get blown up. So we sent two guys with a car, two guys on foot, lost a few people. Salvage the game as much as we can. The tiny mistakes had just uh, stacked up and became big mistakes. Do you realize what happened there, Nerf? Yeah, there's a guy outside as well. Degree. This guy outside south, a guy east, and a guy right in front of us. We had zero chance to win this. Win this I, I kind of prefer not having a coach at the moment. I think it's more like hands on, like everyone has to be a little bit more involved rather than a coach just saying, do this, do this, that. I think team, the team chemistry is good. Um, We'll go back and forth about some things, but at the end of the day, it's not too hard to find some common ground on how we should improve. Yeah, I was definitely speak, but you called the rush. I almost like I almost decided for myself to bait you guys there because I thought it was I don't understand why you rush to push. Some teams that don't need it, they've got great shot callers, they've got good memory men, they people can track the kill count. And to them just they run things themselves, that's great. But for some teams it's necessary. So I think it just it depends a lot on knowing as a team what you need and finding a coach that fits that. Yeah, not having a coach, it comes down to just us communicating our thoughts to each other and making sure we're all on the same page without having that like fifth person to help us out with that. It's always nice to have a coach in the fifth opinion, but I think we all know how to like play the game. We know our strengths, what we need to do. As long as there's no disagreements, and, you know, we can come to a conclusion and what we need to do better like between the four of us. Cloud9 definitely having some of the most snowbally players in the NPL. When they start getting kills, it just seems like it just racks up on top of each other. The atmosphere, like when we, whenever we do bad, we don't get like slam or death or like we talk about it. And like, I mean, it's part of the game. And like everyone knows that like if someone makes a mistake, it's okay. But if you take the initiative to like 
do something and like if you die that's fine because if you never do anything you'll never like actually do good. Oh, I just whipped everything. Nice. Oh, nice. He's in the he's in the dip thirty. He went down to dip thirty. On my marker here. He's on green. He's on green. I'll give him a kill point. I'm not got nice. Good wow! Good. Another no. victory. Yeah. Cloud Nine coming in and securing it at the late game. There, a clinical destruction of simplicity. So, like the last game, uh, we centered up. It could go like the circle could have went east, west, or like came back north to us. Uh, it shifted east, and we decided to wait and hold our edge. And then um, K Mine made a really good call to like scout the compound that we ended up going to to win. Um, and that pretty much just like made things a lot easier for us. It was a little bit risky, but it paid off. So That's the Cloud Nine that I think if we continue to see, we'll see them back in the top three, no problem.